everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. Happy freaking Friday. How's yours going so far? Ours is March break here in here, Canada, there. And uh, it's cold out, but the kids are home and we've had some fun. We've been playing lots of games. We downloaded uh, Family Feud for the PS5. And let me tell you, that's a fun game. And let me also tell you that I suck at Family Feud. Just terrible. But I beat my wife's ass at, uh, what's the one with the wheel spinny thing in the Wheel of Fortune. I kicked my wife's ass in Wheel of Fortune, so. That's what's been going on here at the house. Today we're talking about Kira Renee. Everybody's like, you gotta cover this. You gotta cover this video she did. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And of course it does, because look at who she is. She wants to justify her whole life, but then ignore the, the things that she actually has done and continues to exploit children. So I guess let's just keep talking about it. Before we get to that though, we do have to spin the old wheel of spin of fun and winning prizes. And if you wanna be on this wheel every single week, you have to be above the first tier on either my Patreon or my YouTube membership channel. And at the end of the month, every single member gets put on the wheel and I usually spin it once or twice, just so everybody gets a chance to win something sweet. So get ready to dance, get ready to have some fun. The kids love this song, so bring them on in here. Yeah, baby. Brittany Miller, you have won a prize. Reach out to me, Josh, at the thedadchallengepodcast.com with your shirt size and your address. I'm going to hook you up. Let's go. So if you're new to the whole Kira and Oscar situation, OK Baby was a family vlogger channel that I talked about a long time ago, and they hit their kid in the face with a drone. I remember that video specifically and thinking, oh my gosh, these people are crazy. There's another video when they were young and like the, the stroller was running, falling down the hill and they ran after it. Just all together, just terrible people is what I'm gonna say here. And so anyway, long story short, Kira then ends the relationship, very long relationship, four kids and everything else, and decides that she's gonna go find herself and she just wants to go find herself. And like we now know by the data and the witnesses that she was either A, sleeping with Preston and Hannah together, doing threesomes while she was still together with Oscar, B, just doing it with Preston, or C, a minute after she said she wants to go discover herself, she's with Preston. And so a lot of people have that have problem with that. And they should, because that's just, it's chachi. Because the person that she's now with is her nanny's ex-husband. So it just gets crazy. I mean, how do you, even if you don't, even if you don't believe that she was cheating on Oscar, okay, fine. But clearly there were feelings there while she was with Oscar, because why is she getting together with them two seconds after they break up? You can, it, it, she keeps denying it, but it's just so easy to to. To re it's so easy to deny because even in the video where her and Oscar are breaking up, she's like, oh, what about that guy that you you gave support to or whatever that you were comforting? Obviously, it was Preston. So we all know the shit went down. Anyway, so now we keep covering Kira because she's a train wreck and it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch this lady do what she does. So let's let's see. I mean, everybody's like, you got a blind react to this one. So when I get like 50 messages in one minute on Instagram, I know specifically I got to watch that video. So here it is. <laughs> Okay, Alicia, stop smashing shit. Sometimes I like to push my luck of what I can do in the morning before the kids' school, and today we're going to try to make biscuits and gravy. One Breakfast? I'm in. Biscuits and gravy in the America? Like, biscuits and gravy aren't really a thing, Canada. You can't go to a restaurant and get biscuits and gravy. It doesn't exist here. Okay, like Bob Evans, you go to Bob Evans, there's biscuits and gravy, or you go to like, uh, what's that place, Cracker Barrel? You know, barrel full of white people. It's so good. We don't have that shit here. Tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of butter, one fourth cup flour. Stop saying one fourth. It's just a quarter, a quarter cup, one fourth. It's like you're doing grade four math. Add my bacon. Bacon? Three and a half cups of milk. That's oat milk, so ugh. And okay, that's not very. That doesn't look very good. That doesn't look like the good stuff. Well, supposed to use sausage. Blah. Okay, real quick taste test. It looks so good. I topped mine with some bacon. The girls don't really like. Okay, you're not good at that. Not like my mod Jenna. Okay, so my mod Jenna, she is a baker, and she doesn't do things. She only bakes things for people who like. She's not. 
doesn't do it commercially, but it's probably one of the best cookie makers I've ever seen in my entire life. And probably like the best cook. Like she'll post her meals that she makes at night. And I'm like, damn, but she makes, she made biscuits and gravy once. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Just the pictures of it. I could taste it. Mm. Jenna's a good cook, everybody. Shout out to Jenna, my mod. Bacon that much, so I just put it in the gravy. Oh, you do like bacon? Oh, okay, sorry. Some of the kids don't like bacon, so I put it in the gravy, but not like on top because I didn't have sausage. I'm sure there's some sausage around. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like pierogies. It doesn't look very good at all. Ratio's off. Hey, bye. Leave the camera just sitting in the middle of the floor. <laughs> so stupid. And it's crooked. Hi, guys. We're out. We're on the way. A little Coco Melon story time. I love you. Good official morning, you guys. I am. You already had an official morning. Back home. It's actually what are you wearing. It's been a couple hours. I did some work really quickly. I'm going to start taking my vitamins again as well. I'm going to put here on the screen what's in here. Boyfriend actually did it for me, but... Boyfriend, also known as Sausage, I mean Preston. They call him on the Kira Rene Siverton thread on uh, Reddit, they call him Presticles or Presticide. It's pretty good. They got a couple good ones. He took a picture, so I know what would be in it. What is today? Wednesday. We wish it was Saturday. <laughs> Why? Every day Saturday for you. Yes. Hey, don't make a mess. Or a gene. <laughs> what are you doing? That day got very busy and I literally forgot I was vlogging. Wow, I don't know either. Ha ha. What? Okay. All right, it's been a couple weeks. Mmm, cookies and coke. It's the clips that you just saw, but I didn't realize that I didn't finish the video and then I asked you guys on Instagram what you guys want updates on in my life. Why are you wearing a chessboard? Because I feel like as a creator, I'm constantly just putting out content and vlogs and details about my life. And I don't know about you guys, but there is a lot going on in my life. So long story short. Is there a lot going on? Give me a break. I don't update on a lot of things that I talk about. And I feel like maybe you guys want updates. Maybe you don't, but I feel like a good amount of people did request some updates about some things. Now, I actually already filmed this um, a while ago, but Oscar and I live very different lives. We are very different people. That's why we're not together anymore. I just felt like it was a really rushed day, therefore the video was really rushed and it was just chaotic and I haven't even watched it or edited it, so maybe it was fine, but I just, I don't know, instinctively mm. feel like I should redo it. So, I'll it's probably such some shit she didn't want to say. See the update and will you be getting another tattoo, Sorry. asks Emma. I definitely will be getting another tattoo. It's funny that you say that because within the last like three days, I've really been thinking about it. What daddy wants daddy gets. If she gets that, man, I'm laugh. I try not to put too much thought into my tattoos, but I've really been thinking about like, do I want an image or words? You know, that's really backwards from the average thought process about tattoos, but as far as OCD goes, I definitely always struggle with mental health. Um, I have a lot of different things going on inside of this brain, but I definitely think- Do you? Do you? Okay. I'm in a much, much better place. I feel like you're gonna tip over my camera. Whiskey, I've worked- Of course you named your cat after alcohol. <laughs> I made one of my other, my first dogs is named Whiskey, actually. It's kind of funny. I didn't name it, though, so. A lot, a lot on my mental health in the last, like, two years. And it's been really hard. It's been a lot to overcome, a lot of realizations, a lot of things I wasn't ready to face necessarily. But doing all of that has really helped overall with my... So you've been in therapy for two years for your mental health. And halfway through your therapy was to break up your family and go find some strange taint. That's a good therapist, whoever you're seeing. Real good. Is it like Preston's dad or something? Mental health, but also with my OCD, because I think a lot of that was triggering my OCD. I did see a lot- Does she have OCD? Doesn't OCD like a obsessive compulsive disorder for like cleanliness? Or does it, does it like, does it present in many different ways? Like that you have to do like touching things or saying certain things. I guess it's not just cleanliness, right? That has to do with, it could be any, it could present itself any way, right? of people wanting updates on Lucy. I do also want to say I have all of my cats. I have my dog. People assume every time I show a picture of one animal that I got rid of the rest. I'm not sure why that is, but I definitely still have all my pets. They're all still very loved. And Where's your dog? If your dog's there, why isn't your dog like your, look at my dog. 
I can't even take a dump without this dog being like, I better go with you just to be safe. I'm like, no, you can wait here. He's like, you know what? I feel more comfortable if I went with you and sat in the bathroom with you. That's my dog. My dog is my shadow. Where's your dog? Everybody who's dog people know what I'm saying. Like, is your dog just sitting in a crate all day long? Because if that's the case, shame on you. If you put your dog in a crate for eight hours, I don't even know, like, how I feel. Like, I mean, some dogs can be crate trained and some, if you do it properly, apparently the crate becomes their safe space and it's like something they like. But I can't imagine, like, if you're home all day long, why is your dog in a crate? That brings me to another question that I've been getting asked a lot. In my Instagram bio, I've added three cats and one dog. And a lot of you guys are like, wait, I thought you only have two cats. And you're right, I did only have two cats, but I actually moved in with my boyfriend and he has a cat. Of course, Presticles has a cat. Of course. You know what? Is it time for a Presticle roast? I think so. He looks like he eats the buttons off remote controls. Preston, I hope both sides of your pillow are always warm. Preston definitely licks his fingers between appetizers. He definitely wears a Mickey Mouse shirt to Disney World. <laughs> Loser. Does not trust the GPS. Stands in the middle of the escalator and doesn't move. Like people try and walk by, he's like, mm -mm. He doesn't want something in the grocery store. He doesn't even bring it back to the shelf. He just puts it wherever. You know, like, you know that mofo talks in theaters, right? Says he can throw a football clear over those mountains. Sucks at Mario Kart, just terrible. Terrible at it. He's a, like he's a competitive guy, but he's terrible at Mario Kart. He gets pissed and he throws a controller when he loses. Definitely scared of needles. Calls Yope. Yup. Like a fool. All right, let's get back to this video. So now I have three cats. More. So Preston gets to move in with her and her children. I mean, I, I, I feel like it's... <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, this life. That's just... You have kids to consider. You know what I'm saying? Like she's throwing her kids into this relationship just like she is. And these kids have to live with a strange dude in their house. Man, if I was Oscar, I'd be like, I want custody. About your mom and brother. Um, I also got another question that I'll tie in with this, just about like updates about me and my mental health and how I'm feeling since my mom passed away in January. So I'll answer both of those. Uh, as far as more about my mom and my brother, it just kind of feels like weird to me to share about that because one, it doesn't just involve me. And so, and it's all very touching to be honest or sensitive, not touching, definitely wrong word there. It's all very sensitive. So to speak on things when other people are involved that are sensitive topics, just is not something I have ever felt comfortable to do. Hence why so much of my life recently hasn't been uh... talked about. Because None of it just involves me. But it goes without saying, it's very obvious that I've always had a very, very difficult relationship with my mom, not my brother. I actually feel like we've gotten closer as we've gotten older. And that is something I wanna continue to do. Even though my mom has passed, I wanna make the efforts to continue to see him and talk to him and all that. But yes, my mom and I had a difficult relationship. Um, you know, it's hard having a mother-daughter relationship. I think a lot of people can relate to that. And then when there's other things involved, and trauma and all of that uh yeah there's just a lot to it and i would love to share one day in some way i just i haven't decided that yet i feel like i'm like telling you guys what you want updates on and i'm not able to answer what you want updates on. so then don't answer that question dumbass leave it out of the video she she's she, she, she's trying to tell you here without being too insensitive that she doesn't really care that her mom passed away she didn't have a good relationship with her mom so her mom passing away probably wasn't a super big deal to her I mean, that's just the truth of it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. If you have a shitty, if your parents abused you or did something and your parents passed away and you don't feel bad about it, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Jeanette McCurdy said it best. I'm glad my mom died. Her mom treated her like shit her whole life and was the reason she went through so much turmoil. So a lot of people feel guilty for, you know, just because it's family that you think you need to feel some kind of way, but... We're all human, so I get what she's trying to say, but then don't answer the damn question. I really am trying to be more open and more vulnerable because that's how I was on YouTube all those years ago, and that's how I made the connections with you guys and made the friendships that I have had or still have. And no, nobody's your friend anymore. And I don't regret that, even though I did get hate along that journey as well. And so I don't want to let people who just like drama online ruin my opportunity to find friendships and connections with you guys through vulnerability. So. Okay. What do you mean friendships? What are you saying? You mean parasocial relationships that we're trying to say here? Anybody who wants to be friends with Kira, you're going to know her whole past on the internet and you're not going to want to be friends with her. If you if you want to be friends with somebody who steals other people's husbands and stuff like that, then then go for it. But I think Kira doesn't I think she's so not I think she's so self unaware. She doesn't realize people don't like her because of her actions. 
not maybe necessarily who she is, but because of the things she does and the selfishness. In order to do the things Kira has done, you have to be selfish. That includes exploiting children, okay? Throwing away your family for strange taint, that's selfish, right? Putting a dildo commercial in with your children's videos, that's selfish. Showing everybody everything, that's selfish. Spending money on your boobs and then not taking your kids out of daycare because you can't afford it, that's selfish. Okay, you're selfish. If you wonder why you have no friends, Kira, go to therapy and learn how to be selfless. Okay, that's the, there you go. I really am trying, but truthfully, there just there is some topics that I just either so not then don't get it ready to talk about or just can't talk about it all. Does your new boyfriend make you want to travel more and face your fears? Yes and no. I definitely feel like why do people why say new boyfriend? Everybody knows it's Preston. Why did she just say it? Because of how much I've gone through in the last year and separating from what I thought was the love of my life, that in itself has really pushed me to overcome a lot of my fears. I'm sick of like letting mental health win. As much as that sounds cheesy, I kind of hate saying it. I will say there are some things I have no desire to try or overcome, but then there is things like flying over the ocean that I know I'll be okay. I know I can do it. I just need to push myself to do it. But then also I will say the new person that I'm with is very, very, very understanding of mental health and very supportive of my mental health and is very encouraged. That's because you let him have threesomes and shit like that. That guy's gonna be supportive of anything. Hey, you mind if we have sex and bring extra people into our bedroom? Yeah, that's, that's totally good. I mean, you think, honestly, you think that relationship's gonna last everybody? If your relationship is built off doing threesomes in Vegas and hanging out with strange taint and everything else, you think that's gonna work for you? I've got news for you. It's not. I promise you that overall with me in general and that is something that I'm not very familiar with and what I value so much about our relationship not only do I want to do it but I have somebody cheering me on you seem like an alcoholic now that you split from your baby daddy are you more depressed <laughs> is that funny is that funny that's a very interesting question kind of funny kind of horrible I'm definitely not more depressed the change has been at times depressing, absolutely. Going from having my kids 100% of the time to 50% of the time is very depressing and a very hard adjustment, but overall, I am way happy. Liar. It was so hard, like the, the weeks that they're off, both of them are like, I'm partying, I'm going out, let's do this, Vegas, baby! Like, they, it's just, I don't know, it is, maybe they do it all to forget, I don't know. I don't know, I, I, I don't know what it'd be like to be without my kids, I know that would suck, but. They seem like they're doing okay. Here, I know he is as well. And I definitely don't drink more. I actually kind of feel like I drink less. I'm just more open about the fact that I drink because I'm not so scared of that family channel stigma anymore. Like I am who I am and I kind of felt like- I Is she admitting right now that the family channels, they have to be fake on it? Yes, that's what she's admitting. I was in this box a couple years ago on YouTube where I could just share like how to make mac and cheese and like my school routine in the morning and like that. I that's what you do now, asshole! What? And keep your dog in a crate all day. There's more to me than that. And so I think I've just been more open with it. Is there more to you than that? Like what? Vibrators, dildos, threesomes, sex drawers, expensive shit, nails, ugly hair, fake boobs. There's more to you. You're right, there is more. And it's all worse. You're worse now. That's why you get tons of hate. Because you're worse. I love, love, love wine. I love a... We know. When is wine? Good cocktail, but I... Don't drink them every day. And even if I do have them more often in some weeks, because I definitely do, I'm not getting drunk all the time. Differences you learned about old and new relationships. So I'm gonna speak on this when it comes to all relationships, not just like. Don't speak on relationships, Kira. Can we not, please? Can you shut your pile? Thanks. Boyfriends or fiancés or whatever, like in general, friendship. Uh, uh, don't take advice about relationships from Kira. Okay, because let's take a look at her track record, shall we? Okay. And I can't believe I know this. And I know this because she told us, but goes back to high school where she stole Oscar from her best friend. Also, Oscar left his best friend for her, so he's just as much to blame. I know. But then had four babies with Oscar, and then the next relationship she had was likely cheating on Oscar with Preston, which was their nanny's ex-husband, which was her best friend. So that is the literal extent of Kira's relationships. Okay? So anything she says here... All you have to do is be like, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. No, just let it go here and go, and just into the wind. 
Because that's that's what you need to take advice from this lady from. Because she makes the worst decisions ever. If something that I've learned through all of this that's really helped me is it's very easy as a human being. I kind of think think it's instinctive that we point the finger and we say like, you did this, this is why it didn't work. You know, you as a friend are like this and blah, blah, blah. But I'm trying to work on just work. No, no, that's what happened. That's so what she's like, it's easy to point blame because you're to blame. If you weren't to blame, you wouldn't be saying that. You'd be blaming the other person. About myself, which I feel like that sounds so ridiculous. It when does. I say you it out sound loud. stupid. But truthfully, I'm just, I guess, trying to look at myself in the mirror more and like, what do I need to fix? Because I'm only in control of me and my actions and my thoughts. Teaching my kids their actions and their thoughts and their morals and all of that based on my actions, if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to focus on that, and I feel like I is that what you're focused on? Let's see what you're going to teach your kids so far, Kira, because they can access this. Everybody can. They're going to know that you came with their dad through a broken relationship that you took from your best friend. They're going to know that. Then they're going to know that if you tell them the lie that we all know is a lie, that you broke up with their dad and then went with their nanny's husband that they knew. That's what they're going to know. You're going to teach your children that it's like, yes, queen, slay. If you need to leave because you're unhappy, go ahead, get some strange taint. That's what you're going to teach your children. That is what you're teaching your kids. You're also teaching them it's okay to exploit things for your own positive monetary gain. You're also you're teaching them that making bad choices is good. And that's not true. I know she wants to start a daycare and all this kind of stuff and all, and hopefully she can do that and get off the internet. But Kira, you have no good life lessons to teach your children. You suck at all of this. And you wonder why you get so much heat for what you say, because you speak out of your ass. And it's like you speak out of an ass that you just ate Taco Bell last night after getting drunk. And that's what the ass you're speaking out of. It's like Taco Bell fumes are coming out of there. Nobody wants to listen to you because you have no idea what you're doing. You're bad at this. Just to say out loud, like, oh yeah, like I definitely know I did something wrong. Like in an argument with a boyfriend, right? You're like, oh, I know I did something wrong. But just so you know you, and it's like, wait a minute, like, back up, just stop there. It's very easy to say like, yeah, I know I did that wrong, but like, are you actually absorbing that you did something wrong and what are you saying? Nobody knows what you just said. And doing something to change it. I actually saw a TikTok today. What did it say? Something about like when you learn communication isn't key and comprehension is. That is something I'm trying to learn a lot. Okay. Well, you don't know how to communicate. So I can't comprehend anything you just said. And you'd get mad at me or Oscar, whoever, because they can't comprehend the communication coming out of your forehead. Whose fault is that, Kira? What you just said there made no fucking sense whatsoever. Zero sense. It was just words jumbled together from your brain and has no value in human coherency. So that's probably why shit goes down with Kira. She's like, you're not comprehending me. I can't comprehend you because you sound like your first day with your new mouth. You don't know how to say shit. Listen instead of speak. Future plans. This is a good one. Um, I have a lot of things actually going on right now that I'm really excited Lots about. I feel stuff. like I recently had this realization. Um, this is like way too deep to t and too long to talk about in this video. Maybe I'll make a whole separate video. Let me know if you guys... Oh my god! I had a recent realization where... Basically, when Oscar and I split up, I was just trying to kind of continue my life, right? Like get it with Preston that you had started while you were with Oscar. Yes, makes sense. A new place, get a new house, but like just continue life, continue doing YouTube, continue being a mom, continue saving money as if I had pressed pause and then pressed play again. How are you saving money? $15,000 on new boobs, new car. You're renting a house that's probably in $3,000 range. You're taking trips. Apparently she's in London or she's flying over to London or something. How are you saving money? I look at your view counts. There's no possible way you can pay all your bills and do all this shit. And I know they sold their house and they got a probably a pretty big nest egg right there after selling the house, right? Probably a couple hundred thousand each. But that's going to go away eventually. So what do you mean save money You're out of your mind? And I just had this realization last week when I was having a hard day where it was just like, I'm not continuing my life. I am starting all over from scratch, essentially. Thankfully, I'm very recognizable of the fact that I have YouTube. I have an income and I'm very grateful for that. I, maybe I'm wrong. She's not getting a subscriber in the last 30 days. So there's no growth happening. Uh, 800,000. I know she's lost a bunch of subscribers, but she's not making a lot of money, guys. 
What is this? Last 30 days, half a million views. So that's not terrible, but damn, I do way more views than her. Like three times the amount of views as her. So, and I only have 170,000 subscribers. Okay, baby has not gained anything um, in their last 30 days. Has been. So, okay, baby, still bringing in 260,000. I mean, maybe there's just enough, just enough to pay bills. Maybe. But she does do ad reads, so that's probably bringing her an extra five to six thousand bucks a month. So she's probably doing okay, but not. They're nowhere near what they were doing before. Not even close. But I'm starting over in the sense of what I want in life, what my goals are in life. Like all of that has changed, and my life has become a little bit easier, even though it's been just a week since I've realized that. Because it made me think, like, what do I want? What does Kira want? We know. We know you said it when you broke your family up. Me, me, me. What do I, me, 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 I. And she just got done talking to you about what she's going to teach your children and how she's going to teach them. That's what you're going to teach them. That only you matter, even though you have kids. And they see that and they will always see that and they'll grow into that and they'll be resentful for you because of that. I promise you that. Hands up if you had a parent who always put themselves first. What kind of relationship do you have with that parent now? What do I want as a mom what i want to provide for my kids what experiences do i want to give them and it just really gave me like a new outlook on life so anyways i definitely am working on starting a daycare i feel like i'm finally uh taking steps to do that so that's really exciting i've looked at places i'm working on getting my um licensing for it and all of that so that is in progress and i'm hoping in the next year or two that will be year or two started and you are going to be out of money, lady, because next is a BBL. Then you're going to need to do the fillers. Then you need to do a forehead thing. You're going to, do, you're going to run out of money. And I'm no pressed. I know Presticles isn't probably making that kind of, kind of bank. Maybe he is. I don't know. That, and I'm super excited. I probably won't share a lot of it on here just because obviously that is a lot more around my community and maybe not even good to share online. And then another one is I really, really want to own a home. If you guys were watching my channel at this point, which a lot of you were, in the beginning of this last school year, I was really trying to buy a home. I was already under contract for one. It was beautiful and I loved it. It was like a yeah, nah. Oh my, the vocal fry. Dream <laughs> home. Kids, however, Levi had started school. At the time, I was renting a place like 40 minutes away from the school so I was having to drive 40 minutes away three times a day it was just a lot so I decided to pull out and just rent should have taken your advice years ago to this home get into something very quickly and figure out what I want which I'm very thankful that I did that because that house was almost eight hundred thousand dollars and even though I could afford that I don't want to take that approach to life anymore because my goal when I was eight they, they've got a nest egg they do. And I think that's due to Oscar. I think Oscar was the saver. So they probably had a bunch of money that they just split. Um, oh man, I'd be interesting to know, to see. Because I know it's selling the house, they get a nest egg, right? Plus, they must. Because there's no. she's so confident she has so much money. And maybe she's got enough to live for a few years. Maybe it's true. Maybe they were good with money. I mean, it doesn't look like they were like meth heads or anything. And Oscar was into buying toys and he had to sell those toys in order to split with her at the end or give her money probably. So you have it. But it was weird because if they have that much money and Oscar likes that, th likes the toys, why did he sell them? Well, maybe now because we know he lives in like a box somewhere. He doesn't have enough room for all that shit. So it's so confusing because like, these people spend money like water teen and freshly making good money or even 24 years old or 25 was to just have a nice house and to have a job that made me a lot of money and had a large savings account and all these things and my goal is definitely not that anymore so i'm glad i didn't tie myself down to that house because now i'm able to do other things so i do want to buy a home but i want to buy a smaller home fix up that house oh slash God. just live in that house and let it earn equity over time and then buy another house and rent that house out and just kind of like continue that throughout the years if that makes sense all in the same area of course i love where i live i would never want to leave where i currently live and well then obviously I have a lot of other smaller goals, but those are the two right now that I'm just like actively trying to focus on that aren't emotional. Those are like not my internal goals, but like just like, this is another really good update. Um, there was some people who, not as many as I thought actually, I thought it would bring a lot more people to come at me and just like more comments to deal with, but thankfully it didn't. Um, just a few people wanted to know how I felt about Oscar being friends with him. 
Yeah. I think a lot of people want to make a lot of little things really big things, and I've learned that over the last year and a half, and really had to choose my battles with the internet, but I am genuinely very happy for both of them. I don't care who they are friends with, who he's friends with, who she's friends with, any of that. Why would you care? That's not what they asked. I think people really want it to be more, and it's definitely not. I will say, I think the way that things are portrayed online is a little different than how it actually is, and that can be frustrating. I know what she's saying here. She's basically, she basically just said right there, Hannah's not as innocent as everybody thinks. She thinks she's been unfairly cast as this person that broke up a family and then took her ex-employee slash nanny slash best friend's husband, right? And she's like, that's a little frustrating that I can't actually tell the truth. Because obviously, if Preston's going to throw Hannah under the bus and they're going to cheat and everything else, I mean, clearly their relationship wasn't solid to begin with, right? And especially if, you know, strange forehead comes into the picture, it's going to cause division, right? So obviously Preston's as much to blame as Kira is. But what she's saying here is that you guys don't know everything. And she's basically saying that so that Hannah knows she's saying that, by the way. Um, but that will never be something that I really open up about because, again, it involves a lot of people. And also, it just, in order for me to move on in a healthy way, it doesn't really Because matter. it's all about you, Kira. Forget everybody else. So, no, I do not care that they hang out. I think it's great. I'm glad that they have each other to keep each other company because both him and her came from different states. And because I've done that myself, I know how lonely it can be here, especially when you go through a change like we all did last year. So I'm glad that they found each other through that. Harry Potter and the audacity of this forehead. Listen to her. She's like, you know, it's good for the, I hope they do okay. It's so lonely here. I got her, you know, I got her husband and we're good here. I got what I wanted. I wish them all the best. That is right. You guys feeling that? Ugh, she's so nasty. Money, how's it providing? How is it providing for yourself? Challenging, easy. Money, how is it providing for yourself? Challenging, easy, etc. I like this because it was definitely it was definitely well words. It was definitely something I worried about when I split up with Oscar. Like, how am I going to provide for myself? I don't really know a lot about all of this. Like, you know, all of that. And truthfully, it, it it's been easier because I'm in charge of my money. I don't have somebody else telling me what to do. I'm not responsible for somebody else's money. I'm not telling them what to do. So it definitely feels good. It is sometimes a little bit scary if I think about it too deeply. Like, I am financially all by myself responsible for my children and no you co-parent with oscar you're both responsible for your children so that's stupid and just like for myself in general like it's a scary thought but it's also nice i do have a boyfriend that i live with as mentioned but we do finances different because of our past and are both still financially independent and responsible for ourselves we share slash split certain things but are not relying on each other aka this guy's a leech. Because it's taught me a lot. Like I've really had to pay attention and learn. And one thing I realized is I was not careful with my money. We as a couple were not careful there it with is. our money. There it we didn't is. even know what we were making and we didn't know what we were spending. And so I've really super awesome. had to like buckle down and be like, if I want a future for me and my kids and I want the things that I want, I'm going to need to figure out what I'm doing here. And so it's taught me a lot. And in that sense, it was hard. But being just in charge of myself and the kids and not having to worry about somebody's opinion is naturally easier. You not having a license and driving recklessly. <laughs> here we go. Oh, my gosh. She was driving recklessly. If you go to the Kira Renee Reddit page, they have it here. Yeah, there. And this is the one that pissed me off. She posted this and deleted it. This is her dog and the crate, and the dog and the dog is way too big for that crate. That is a crate for like a chihuahua, okay? Not this size of dog. The dog cannot stretch out and is literally sitting in this tiny little cage and she deleted it. Kira, get a bigger crate for your dog. I promise you this. People might not cancel you for being a complete nitty, complete nutter moron, that's for sure. But go ahead and piss off the dog lovers. Go ahead and see what happens. Okay? The internet has no space for people who treat dogs like shit. Get your dog a bigger crate or take, let your dog out considering you're home all day. Oh, that pissed me off. Where's the video? Anyway, it's not there. So anyway, she was, uh, she did a, a live. She's, dr she's driving with her phone like this and passing a transport truck on the right side, by the way. So 
do yourself a favor. If you drive on the highway, don't pass a transport truck on its right side. Okay. It's the most dangerous way to pass a transport vehicle. And she does this all the time. She does it all the time. She's laughing, but she thinks it's funny. I will say since Oscar and I split up, I get hated on for the tiniest things. And it's actually, that's not a tiny thing, asshole. You could leave your kids without a mother. If you get in an accident and die because you need to make an Instagram reel, that's not a tiny thing. And that's the thing that's scary about these people. They think that's nothing. Actually helped me realize like, okay, it's all just drama and hate. They're not like, no, not you moron. All here, Kira. Here's all you have to say here. You know what, guys? You're right. I'm not going to do that anymore because it is dangerous and nobody should do that. It's dangerous. That's it. That's all you have to say here. Do you know how many people would be like, oh my God, you're a human being, but she can't even admit that driving and pass in driving while on a phone, passing a transport truck on the right side. She's like, it's just hate, just hate you idiot. Because people just like the entertainment of it. So anyways, I have my driver's license. <laughs> it was expired and then I got a new one and it was a very short time frame in that time frame that I was driving around where it was expired and I didn't have it. I thought it was like eight years or something, wasn't it? Didn't she say it was like a long time? Not eight years, but it was a long time. It wasn't very, very it was weeks. But I do have my driver's license and I've had my driver's license since I was like 15 years old. Driving recklessly. This one, I do understand uh, a little bit, a very a tiny little bit. wee bit. Of Just a little bit. About it. I took a reel of my nails before and after and oh my gosh, you guys, the backlash. <laughs> Does she still have it on her Instagram? Does she block me yet? She didn't block me yet. Good for you. Does she delete it? She deleted the reel. Or did she? Here's my boobs. Here's my panties. This is this is a mom on Instagram, everybody. So I guess it's gone. <laughs> I couldn't even. I didn't even. So not only is she like showing her nails, she's got her phone like this to take the picture of the nails. Okay. She's got her phone like this to take the picture of the nails and her hands aren't on the steering wheel. And she's literally passing a transport truck doing that. And she thinks it's funny read more than like a couple comments because i was like yep this is when i log off it's like when you get to the wrong side of the internet and you're like i'm on the wrong side i don't know how i got what here, but I'm on the wrong side that's how i felt but i definitely understand where people are coming from and i will make the efforts to be more cautious i don't text and drive i am like the person who has everything hooked up to my car and i do everything through that but I did take that two second video. I was by myself in the car. I was going extremely slow and there was nobody else. I don't care. On the road. The there was a transport truck on the road, asshole. First time, first of all. And then the second time I was on the freeway, that wasn't that good. But what really grinds- And then she just glossed over that. Second time was, you know, first time there was nobody. Second time, blah, blah, blah. You see what she's doing right there? She's trying to diminish the fact that she's an asshole. My gears about all of it is I guarantee you 95% of the people hating, not people in the world, okay, just those commenters mm -hmm. totally have texted and drive, drove. You get it. How are you in- No, and we're not texting. You weren't texting. You literally were taking a photo of your nails with two hands, no hands in the steering wheel, passing a transport truck. So are you saying everybody does that? Is that what you're saying? Or are you just saying, because I think you've done it too, it's okay for me to do it. Is that what you're saying, Kira? Excellent. Again, you're the public figure, nobody else is. You wonder why you get scrutinized. Oscar doing. Oscar and I, I will say, have done a really good job at putting our own emotions aside to be able to be there for the kids. And that's something I wasn't sure was going to be possible. And I'm very grateful that's how things are. Now, how we are. From what we've seen, the audacity of that statement is crazy. I hadn't been sure Oscars would be able to put his emotions aside. Are you serious? Of the two people that we've always seen on this channel, we've talked about, of, the, of these two people, her and Oscar, who would have the more emotional disconnect and not be able to put her emotions to the side? Eh, forehead, that's who. You're out of your mind, Kira. On a personal level, um, I have a lot of anger towards him and I know that he has a lot of hurt towards me. I can't speak for all of his emotions, obviously, and I'm not comfortable. What are you mad at Oscar for? From what we've seen, he's been nothing but like super amazing to you for what you did to him. You cheated on him, Kira. Okay. You now his kids are living with strange taint presticles. You literally threw him under the bus so many times. You've you've told them to do a bunch of th and you still took advantage of him. Are you seriously? I hold a lot of anger. What did he do? I mean, 
keep going because I'm sure Oscar's got all the tea, right? So is it because he he did a couple of lives where he wasn't very, are you, what are you angry about? What do you have to be angry about? You're gross. Sharing all of mine because I'm not even quite sure he fully understands how I feel about him and our relationship even at this point. So so you're telling the internet without telling your children's father how you feel. So instead, you're just going to tell a bunch of strangers on the internet without going to communicate with him first because you're so you want this for the kids so badly. So here's your way of making things good for your kids is to tell strangers on the internet your problems and not go to him directly. That makes a lot of sense. You're real good at this thing. Yeah, we definitely, we try our best. Co-parenting is really, really, really hard. And like I said earlier in this video, I don't feel like things are portrayed very accurately online. And that can be very frustrating, but it's not worth. That's your fault. The anger, the sadness, the emotion. Um, ruining the good co-parenting thing that we have going and all of that. So my honest and vulnerable answer to you guys is we do our best with the situation and that you've created. Okay. We definitely put our kids first. How are your kids doing with separated parents? Do you find it affected them in a bad way? My kids are very young um, and I know everybody's situation is different, but for me, Oscar and I never had a, like a lot of affection. We never really touched each other or kissed in front of the kids or held hands. Like I'm not even sure the kids really understood that like we were in a relationship, you know? What? Did they call you mom and dad? Did you live together in a home? Then you're mom and dad. You're a family. Did you go out together? Did you go vacations together? Did you have Christmas together? Did you do everything together? You did everything together, right? You slept together? You had more kids together? Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't think your kids understood that you guys were in a relationship? What kind of phrase? What kind of statement is that? Is this her justifying? Oh, it was okay. They didn't. They, they, they just thought we were friends. Our kids, who we are their parents... They, one day my daughter asked, are you, do you like daddy more than friends? <laughs> no, no, we're just friends, dear. Are you out of your damn mind, you idiot? What? What is she saying? Here will say anything to justify the shit that she has put other people through. Yes, this affects your children. A hundred percent it affects your children. If that's all they knew, you don't know what attachment is, do you? Clearly she doesn't know what it is. She, and she's going to try to justify be like, oh, the kids knew we were just friends. <laughs> My God! They were, they're too little. I will say Levi, I think, a little bit more understood than the girls, but not so much. So once we did split, I think the biggest and the hardest thing was just like being dropped off and picked up, which I know is very normal for- No, I promise you that wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was seeing their parents not be their parents together anymore in a home where they were probably safer. I don't know, man. She's she's dumb for saying that. I'm sorry. That is the silliest thing I've ever heard anybody say. Imagine saying that in front of a judge for custody. Well, the kids knew that we were just friends before, so it's all good, right? The kids, we were friends. We didn't hug or kiss or anything. You didn't? Or co-parenting relationships and freshly separated parents, like that's really the hardest part to overcome. But overall, I'm very impressed with how they've responded, and I don't think it's been that much of an adjustment for them. <laughs> Okay. This comment makes me want to cry a little bit. Moving on. Mentally, how are you? I hope good. Being loved in the ways that you dreamed. I definitely have ups and downs. Is this the way you've been? You dreamed about being in love, stealing someone else's husband? Mm-hmm. That's my dream too. I can't wait someday for a guy who's already married to come along and do threesomes with me in Vegas. It's just sweep me off my feet. The smell was a little bad, but you know, it's just. It's, it's so romantic and just, it's every girl's dream to break up their family for strange taint. It's just, why hasn't Disney created a movie like that yet? It's really hard to not have my kids. That is something that is extremely difficult. She keeps saying that about her kids, like she wants her kids full time. And Oscar, I hope you're listening to that and that you're getting a damn lawyer. These people are so stupid for both of them not getting lawyers. Because if anything, she's probably already gotten a lawyer. And she's going to be filing for full custody in the coming days. In the coming months, I probably. Like, she's not going to let it get too far. Because if you let it get too far and you create a thing, the judge is going to take that into consideration. So, if she's... If, I guarantee she's got a plan to be like, I want full custody of these children. And she's going to fight for it. She is that type of person. She's willing to take anything away from anybody else for her own selfish gains. Okay?
She will do it. So Oscar, get a lawyer now. It's even harder when you want them to be with their dad, you know? Like, I want him a part of their lives, of course. So I'm oh, like... You're so generous. Happy that he is around and all that, but... Selfishly, but, also, sometimes it's really hard, and I want them here with me all the time, 100% of the time. And But weren't you trying to hire a nanny for full time while they were with you? Sounds like you really want to be around them. Kira, you don't have a regular job, so why would you need a full time nanny for when they are with you? Please make it make sense. Thanks. So that is an adjustment I'm not quite sure I'll ever get used to. I actually had somebody message me on Instagram and ask, like, when do you get used to it? When do you not lay in bed and cry when they're gone and you hear the silence? <laughs> no, you hear freaking strange taint snoring beside you is what you hear. And my answer is, I don't know. I hope you have an answer for me because I'm a year and a half in and it is not gotten any easier at all. I do think that there has been times where the first day I'm like, okay, I needed a break, you know, but then the second day I'm just a mess again. So, I well, if it isn't the consequences of your actions, no, it's that she makes it sound like her kids are everything and yet was not enough to overcome her own selfish desires. So they aren't everything. Sounds like she loves her kids, and that's great, but we're not enough to overcome the selfish desires for Strange Taint. It is really hard for me, but overall, I definitely feel like... Press Taint. That's a good one, right? Hey, Press Taint. It's been so good for me, and I'm so grateful that at 25 years old, I mean, I'm 26, but I was 25 at the time, at 25 years old, I've been able to have a life crisis essentially and really be forced to self-reflect and change what is so horrible about me and have you though doesn't sound like you have whatever i didn't like about my life you know i feel like I why couldn't you do that while you're with your i know it's not her husband why couldn't you do that then why is why did it take you throwing your family under the bus to change the things about you didn't like i feel like that's kind of a slap in the face to your family and oscar I'm going to change everything I don't like about me that I know I'm, my, I'm going to change all my toxic traits and behaviors after I leave you. Imagine you would have changed your toxic behaviors before that. Maybe you could have saved this family you love so much, right? And maybe Oscar would have seen that and been like, I'm going to change my toxic behaviors. Why are you saying this now? You're like, oh, I, I had to leave in order to change my toxic behaviors. What? Holy shit, this lady's bad. I could have realized that at 50 years old and maybe not had the opportunity to turn things around for myself. So it's been really hard um, and really challenging, but I'm very grateful and I'm definitely in a better place and feel like I will only continue to be in a better place as time goes on. House plans, are you still thinking of buying? And if so- She already answered this. So I, this lease ends in like six months, five or six months. And so, um, that is when I would probably start looking in like four months. Although I am actively looking, I'm always actively looking. I have been since I, Oscar, I moved out of the house that Oscar and I owned. And so if like the perfect opportunity came up, then I would definitely jump on it, especially in this market. But F off. Especially. It's not especially. Yeah, you jumped on it. Whatever you could find. But sex. That being said, I'm not in any rush and I'm re sorry, I got cut off. Um, but anyways, I'm really trying to work on patience in my life. I have never been somebody who's had that. I've always like wanted right now, you know, like, okay, we have the money to buy a house, let's go find one today and move into that and all that. And I'm I don't want to do that anymore. I want to take my time and be patient and wait for the right thing and the right home and the right opportunity and like all that stuff this is really like random but in a small way i've done that with like my home decor instead of just oh going, my god being like okay buy everything to furnish that room <gasps> done within like one week that's what i used to do and this time i have only bought things that i saw and like truly fell in love with and because of that there's some rooms in my house that look relatively empty but it's made the rooms that i do have that do have decor in it rooms that i love and decor that i am in love with so it just is like proving to me that that is the right thing to do which may come obvious to some people but i'm just like, i don't know what she said 
because I'm playing with a fake thumb. Impulsive person. Any friendships that you've been able to mend, would you want to? This is a really good question. I have no friends. Question. You guys have seen me. I mean, I got on the internet when I was 18 years old, I believe. And I've really, uh, I've moved a lot. I've gone through different friendships. And I think there's definitely some people have made more dramatic online. Like there was some breakup or whatever. And that hasn't been the case. But you have definitely seen me gain friends and lose them. And that's... That's, we've only seen you lose them. It's been a really interesting thing to have public. But um, I definitely think there has been friendships that I've been able to quote unquote mend or reconnect with. And then there's friendships where as much as I wish them the best and I'm very grateful that they were a part of my life when they were. And I hope nothing but just happiness and success for them. Um, I wouldn't want to reconnect or fix or mend them. I wouldn't either with my new Strange Taints ex-wife. I... I understand that. I think you can all understand that. Because they weren't healthy friendships. And I think that that goes for a good amount of the friendships that I Yeah, I'm sure you're a healthy friend to a lot of people there, Kira. <laughs> idiot. I did hot. And she's got friends. So, and, she, and some of her healthy friendships are just fam. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. We believe you. It really, you can really tell a lot about a person's character by who they surround themselves with. Right? You really can. Like the people I surround myself with are very similar to me. My, the people I surround myself with are just like class act, awesome dudes. Okay, just amazing. A lot of female friends too who are amazing too. I had a friend in Ottawa and it doesn't matter how, what kind of time goes in between me seeing her, I can show up her house unannounced five years later and we'll talk for hours. Like the, I have friends like Tommy, Mark, Jeff, Troy, I got my, I got my, my guitar player, Brett. I got all these guys in my life who are just amazing. Okay, and I, I, I consider myself fully enriched because of the people in my life are just amazing. They are so good. And I would not surround myself with people like this because I don't respect them. If, if, I, if you can't respect the person you're friends with, you can't be friends with them. You don't trust them, you can't be friends with them. Right, so it really does say a lot with who you put yourself and what circles you're in, right? And that's why these people can't keep any friends. And they wonder why. It's because they're that person that those other friends are like, ah, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't like them. I don't trust them. They're not trust. They're not trustworthy. They're selfish. I don't want to be around them because I don't, I'm not a better person when I'm around them. Right? That's why her and Jess fam can't keep friends. That's, that's a pretty good uh, epiphany I just had there. And that's not saying anything about that. And that's a reminder for you guys. If you've got a ride or die or someone that you're really close friends with or someone that you just appreciate, make sure you reach out to them today for no reason at all and say, I effing appreciate you. I think you're amazing. Just out of the blue, send them some cookies or something. I'm like I'm speaking for me personally, and that's been another thing I've had to really face and overcome and uh, reflect on. And that's truly that's been the hardest one is the type of friend that I am. Oh, I realized I never answered this question, even though I said I was going to. Grieving process with your mom. I'm still struggling with my dad's passing in January. Well, first of all, Amber, I'm so sorry. Life and like she is. I, I've obviously, I don't know. Okay, last one. This is more of like a- Finally! An update, but do you still have the Peloton? What do you think about it after having it for a while? I do love the Peloton. I think it's a great product, but I think there's a lot of very similar products for a quarter of the price. So definitely don't buy a Peloton. Is she throwing Peloton? Didn't Peloton give her a free bike? Damn! Because you're, well, not, not don't buy it, but you're only buying it for the brand. At the time I bought it, I do feel like there wasn't very comparable products out there, but now there's a million great ones out there and Peloton is just not, like, it's not, like, you're paying for the brand name, essentially. Says the one with, like, 17 Yves Saint Laurent, like, 10 Louis Vuitton purses. Mm-hmm. Definitely trust what she has to say about shit, for sure. 100%. Anyways, I haven't even eaten my cookie or drank my drink, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. You suck balls. Literally. Presticles. You suck presticles. <laughs> anyway, that was bullshit. That was quite... Every time she does a video, she just releases more information about herself, and none of it is ever good. She has this... This, she has these like rose colored sunglasses she puts on. She's like, I can't do this video and people are going to think different about me. They're going to finally realize that I'm not the person that they think I am. And then we say, holy shit, you're actually worse than we thought. Keep it going there, Kiri, you dumbass. Jeez. Everybody, take a deep breath. Oh, the Friday breaths are the best. Breaths are best. Breath. Breaths are best. 
You guys are amazing, incredible, and valuable. Again, call someone today that you think is valuable to your life and had, who adds, who enriches your life. Text, call, whatever, anything, and just say, effing, you're awesome. And say it like, just like this, you're effing awesome. Josh told me to tell you that, okay? But you guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for these conversations. And I hope you have an amazing day. And guess what I got in the mail? American Airlines sent me a check for $320. Got my pay, got my pay. That's gonna be gone. That's not even groceries. Yeah. See you tomorrow.